everybody see this plant right here? This is milkweed. And the reason it's called milkweed is if you take off one of the leaves, it bleeds milk. But it doesn't taste like milk. <laughs> it's very bitter. So you don't wanna you don't wanna taste that. But this is a plant that Gibbons called uh, the supermarket of the fields. And just like uh, the cattail, it just has so many uses. It's just incredible. I usually start gathering parts of the milkweed at this point in time, this time of year. Some people gather the young shoots of the milkweed when they're about this high. But unfortunately, those shoots resemble a, a poisonous plant called dogbane. And they look enough alike at that point that I would discourage any new foragers from trying to eat the shoots of the milkweed, unless you're sure you've made a, a, a note of a point that the only milkweed grow in your garden and you know what the milkweed looks like. So what I usually do is I wait until the milkweed starts producing. These little, <laughs> it's really hard to see, but these are the buds of the milkweed. They look like broccoli. These are too small at this point. They look like broccoli. And what I do is I use the buds. And these buds eventually turn into those beautiful flowers. Oh good, that's a bigger one. Thank you. Okay. This is the milkweed bud. Looks like broccoli a little bit. And these eventually turn into those beautiful, fragrant flowers that are pink. And then the flowers turn into the pods, which have the silk that flow, fly all around the, the fields in the fall. At this point in time, I collect the buds. I usually cook them. And there's been a little bit of a controversy about cooking the milkweed, uh, milkweed products because a lot of wild food authors say that, and me included at, at one point, uh, say that you have to cook these in multiple waters. In other words, you boil it and then get rid of the water, then boil it again, and then rid of the water, boil it again, rid of the water, to get rid of the bitter principle that it supposedly has. But it's been, several of my colleagues have felt that the reason that those directions were made were, was because a lot of folks were confusing the milkweed at its young stage with, with the dogbane, which, and the dogbane is very poison, and very bitter. So that's why they, from book to book to book, it would say, do this. So I dutifully did that, but now when I cook them, I just uh, change the water, cook it up for about two minutes, change the water, cook it up for about two minutes, and then just cook it for about two more minutes more. So I'm not really cooking it a, a lot. And when the flowers come out, I don't cook them at all. I eat them straight from the plant, no problem. And I've eaten, I've eaten the leaves straight from the plant, and they're not bitter. So I think that was the, the problem was that people were confusing this plant with the dog bane. Um, you, so you can eat these. In fact, we'll have a sample uh, today at our taste. And then when they turn into the flowers, I love to take the flowers and put them into my salads, sprinkle them in my salads, they're so fragrant. Put the flowers in a room, close the door, and you have instant aromatherapy. Really, really nice. And then when the flowers turn into the pods, when the pods are real small, you can snack on them. And you can just eat them just out in the field. They're really, really good. The silk hasn't developed yet. You do not want to eat the pods when the silk is developed because you're going to get a mouthful of cotton. But when they're really small, you can just eat them off the, off the bush. And then you can also cook them. And when they're about this size, you can cook them and take out the, the, what's going to become the silk. It's just very white, a beautiful white. And you can use that just in stir fries and stuff. So this is an amazing plant. And then when, of course, when it gets older, the pods become this big and then they have the silk in them and the seeds. And then they go off 
so doing their thing. September or something like that? That's uh, late August, September, yeah, some, sometime. But, so the that. early pods would be like early August? The something? early pods would be, let's see, the, these are coming out now. The, the, these are coming out now, mid-June, early June. The flowers will probably be in another couple of weeks. No, it might be even uh, mid-August. Okay. You want to get them when they're small, mm -hmm. just as a snack, or to eat them, or to cook them about this big. And you can tell if they're real mushy when you when you touch them, they're probably too gone by. And there's a fellow out in oh gosh, where is he? Nebraska, I think, who has who has who has developed um, a business where he takes the milkweed silk because it is so soft and so so wonderful, and he's combining it with down, mm -hmm. and he's selling products with that combination of milkweed and uh, milkweed silk and uh, down. And I think it's called the Oglala Milkweed Company or something like that. And it's, it's, it's so cool that he's using this because there's so much of this. And in fact, in World War II, what they used to do, what the children used to do was to go out and collect the silk because the silk was uh, covered with a waxy substance that would make it easy to use in flotation devices. And a lot of the World War II uh, people who were fighting needed flotation devices and they couldn't get the kapok from the Philippines or wherever it came from. So they would use, they use the milkweed silk instead. So this plant, and this plant has fiber. So there's just so much, so much. Has anybody weave the silk? Has anybody weaved the silk? I don't know. I would think that you could spin it into something, but you have to get rid of the seeds. There's a way, there has to be a way of getting rid of the seeds. You could probably stuff pillows with it because it is so soft, but you'd need a whole lot of it. But usually, there's loads of it. I mean, this is going to be full of uh, wonderful things in a few, in a few weeks. Can you, so, can you identify the difference when it's a young shoot between that and dog bane? Dog mane is usually reddish, and this has a few, just a few little hairs on it. Yeah. And the dogweed is more smooth. Yeah. And then when the dog, we, uh, dog bane, I'm sorry, when the dog bane gets older, it branches out. This usually stays like one, one stalk. The dog bane goes like that, and then like that. And it, the fruits, the flowers are very different. Yeah. So it's only when it's really young. So if you, when you're harvesting them when you're, they're young, if you looked under a microscope and saw little hairs, then yeah. you could be pretty sure. And also, the dog bane usually is more reddish. 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 Okay. Thinner. Yeah. And thinner. They do grow, oftentimes they grow in the same area, so. But that's why I just, you know, I don't bother with it. I just use the, you know, the buds and the, uh, you know, once it's this, at this stage, it's very easy to tell. And if you look on the underside of the leaves, they look kind of almost hairy, of the milkweed. So dog bane doesn't have the buds? The dogweed <laughs> doesn't have these buds at all. Okay, so they're they're completely different. So these okay. are more like broccoli. If you see buds that look like broccoli, you've got milkweed. Okay.